In this video, we're going to focus on creating a Hoover effect here on the tick scale line on the Y scale specifically, that as we hover around here, it will highlight the specific line that we are hovering on. So let's start look how to do this. So let's start look how to create a Hoover effect that change the scale lines here as we move with our mouse. So the first thing that we need to have here is to have our border template, which you can find here in chartjs3.com getting started. Once you're on this uh, page and this link, you can find as well in the description box, scroll down and copy this chunk of code and you're good to go. If you want to get the source codes of this video or many other, check out my Patreon page here. So what I'm going to do here is the following. We're going to scroll down and we're going to start working on creating a plugin. And this plugin will specifically be the, I guess the Hoover scale plugin, but it could be anything you want. So then what I want to do here is create a constant Hoover scale ID. And then we have here the Hoover scale comma. And then what I want to do here is I want to draw the lines and I want to make sure that the lines are behind these bars here. So for that case, we're going to say here before the data set, data sets, make sure with, with an S has been drawn, we will draw this specific shape. So we're going to say char, chart, art, and plugin options, so plugins. And then in here, I'm going to say here an object destructuring. If you don't know object destructuring, check out my video, Understanding Chart Yet Object Destructuring. And you can find this data in the description box or the link for the video in the description box. So what I'm going to do here is CTX, I guess we can do here the chart area. And then probably what we want to do is basically as we hover over or more specifically mouse over the specific coordinates here of it, I want to highlight the lines here, but I want to highlight specifically only these lines. I don't want to have like a cross here. So it should be this, this, this. The moment we hover over it, it will get the nearest location. So to do this, what I need to do here is, well, probably need to have the left and right because I want to have the line from this side all the way to the other side. And then I'm not sure what we need more, probably the X and Y scale. So we're going to say a scales and I'm going to break it down X and Y. So once we have this, what I want to do here is just say a ctx.save to save all variables above. And before we even continue on here, I need to create a, another item which is the after event so basically what i want to do is when my mouse cursor moves around here after that specific event it should start to draw this or redraw basically the chart with our new instructions so that's what i want to do here so we're going to say here the basics we're going to grab all of these then we can do here probably an object destructuring as well. Do we need that? I have to check just to be sure. I'm going to grab all of this. Put it in here. So once we have this here, what I want to do here first of all is get the arcs. So I'm going to say a console log arcs, save, refresh, open up the developer tab. And as I hover over here or mouse over to be more, more correct, you will see here the type is mouse over. And it can say here if we are in the chart area, yes or no. This is important because I want to make sure that if it's not in a chart area, it should be false and then don't draw anything at all. So this is very important and let's start to apply this or test this. So we say here in the arcs dot in chart area. And what I want to do here, we'll say this and then we can grab that. And then I can do here a very simple if statement. So if in chart area equals true. In that case, what I want to do here is console log. Yes, something like that. Just to, uh, to test this, save, refresh. And as you can see here, I start to test this and it will work. But the moment I'm outside of the chart area and the chart area is basically these four lines within where the chart is being drawn. So this is clearly working. So, and then what I will do here else, because what I need to do here is add a variable. So what I want to do with the variable that we're going to use is give it a variable, but that variable needs to be translated or uh, traveling to here. Basically, I need to make sure that the value will also be recognized here. To do this, I'm going to use the JavaScript hoisting. And hoisting is basically, we're going to give it a variable and that variable can move and be assigned anywhere else. 
as well. So it recognizes all over the place. So what I'm going to say here is a, uh, we can say Hoover scale. Going to put that in there, but we will assign no specific value in here. What I will do then is here, we can say here in this case, Hoover scale will be, let's say number one. And if it's outside of the chart area, the Hoover scale will be zero. What I want to do now is say here, console log, Hoover scale. So we have nothing assigned here, but these two here will give the value and transform it here or put it in here. So let's refresh. Uh, Hoover scale head. Oh, sorry. This is already main. Let's say here. Mouse over scale, I guess. Mouse over or mouse move scale. Let's do that one. Sorry about that. Put it in here. Put it in here. Save. Refresh. So as you can see, right now it's undefined. And as I, I guess we can hover over this here, the tooltip will redraw everything here. And you can see here it recognizes it. The moment I'm out, it will remove it. So that is fine. But of course, what I need here is I need to know which one of these ticks am I near to. So that's what we're going to do now. So how to do this is what we're going to do here is uh, we have here the scales. And you have the X and Y. And I guess here what we could do here, maybe we'll assign this as a value as undefined. So we have it by default, but else we're going to change that. And this here could be undefined as well. And the reason for that is we cannot have number zero here because that might be the bottom line here. So it must be undefined. So what is the value here or how do we get this value? What I want to do here is get a specific value. Let's do that one. Console log. We're going to say arcs. And then we're going to grab here. Well, basically the event I need to track. So if I hover over this, we get these values here. As you can see here, the event. And then we have here the Y value. This value is for us very useful because basically this pixel value can be translated into one of these values here. So let's start to work on that. Uh, what we're going to do now is we have this. So we're going to grab this one here. Uh, or sorry, here above. I'm going to say here the what uh, this should be. Uh, how do you get there? Events and then Y. So events or event Y value. So if I save this, now we have the Y value. All right. So now I want to change this. So what I want to do here is I want to say here, for example, Y dot get value for pixel and convert basically the pixel coordinate into a y value on the scale and you can see here as i hover over it, we're getting here all the numbers this is 1.4 somewhere here between zero if i go up to 16 let's see here it gets 16 but you can see here it gets all the decimals as well it's very exact so i don't want that exactness because what i need here is instead of being exact i want to have only this this these here so we have to work with that one but that will be done in here we're going to start working on that so i'm going to copy this i'm going to say this will be here now if i save this refresh you can see here we get the value of the console log from here all right so that works nicely so let's start to draw something first so we're going to draw a shape here or a line we're going to say here ctx.begin path and the reason i'm doing that is because i want to make sure nothing bleeds over to any other uh, shape so i'm going to say begin path and and then we're going to say a ctx dot move to which is basically creating a line x and y and then we have here the ctx dot line to which is the connecting line x and y coordinates so let's start to put in the X and Y here. First thing what we need to do is we need to know we will start somewhere here on the left side. Where exactly? We have to check. But we know it is definitely on the left and we have this left here. We also know the ending will be on the right somewhere. So if I put in here right, we can do here now a test by saying here 100 by 100. And then we're going to say CTX dot stroke to draw that line. If I save this, refresh, you can see here it works, but of course, right now it's just a solid line. What we could do now is, can put in the move scale. If you put in here, we probably will get something 
weird let's see here all right as you can see here it does something it moves a little bit but it doesn't really work well and the reason why is the move scale gets the pixel value or whatever the matching value is on the scale here that is from 0 to 18 pixels so if I go down I should go the line should go up because it's almost 0 pixels there we are all right what we need to do here now is get this value and then we need to convert this value here. So what I'm going to do here is figuring out what we call the uh, step size. I need to know how many, uh, every tick, how many values or points or step size it has. So one step size should be two in this case. I need to calculate this. So to calculate that, I'm going to do it here above. Then we're going to say your console log. And then we can say here, we're going to get here the Y scale which is here, so if I save that, refresh, and then we get here some of these drawings, if I'm not mistaken, and that is this one here, the A6. If I click on this, we can see here the ticks, and we get some information here. And what I really need here is basically one single thing here. I think there's no step size indicated here, so what I want to do is I just get tick, whatever the tick is, and then we take the other tick as well, and we're going to uh, compare them what is the exact value so we're going to grab this value number two deduct number zero from that then you will see we get a value of two but the reason I'm doing that is if you have a negative number you will have to you will calculate like that and it will work nicely all right so what I'm going to do here is to get this I need to go into tick tick will be then index zero and then I'm going to say here specifically the tick index zero and then the value more specific and then what I want to do here I want to say put this in there so we deduct tick index 0 from tick index or sorry ticks in, tick index 1 minus ticks tick index 0 by doing that uh, all right reading number one at the object 86 uh, value all right interesting so let's see what's going on here Let's do a console log again and just see if I am getting the right value or what am I missing here? Did I do I have to put ticks with an S? Uh, tick, 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 ticks, my bad. It should be with an S, it's plural. So that will mean here, S, S, it's plural, not a singular. Save, refresh. So you can see here we get a value of 2. And we can confirm if this will work if we do a negative, if I do a negative value here. You can see here, it's now five and it will be shown here as well so this works nicely so now i'm going to scroll down here and what i want to do here basically is calculate the tick step size so this is basically constant tick step size equals the item here so now we have this here and what i want to do now is putting here basically the tick step size or we have that one this will be important uh, what I need to do here first is let's put in here this value and convert this instead of whatever the tick value is that we get it gives here a value that value should be now again converted into a pixel and the reason why we do here but you because you might say well aren't we doing this here the same and now we convert it back that is correct the reason why here I'm getting what is the nearest value there and so then we get the absolutes if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So what I'm going to do here now, we can just say here, um, we will say, get the pixel for the value. And then we can grab this one as well and save that. Refresh. Uh, all right. All right, so you can see here, we get some issues here and the reason for this is I realized I forgot a item here so we have this here what I want to do is I want to redraw it and we want to make sure that there's a special command for that which is called arc.change and we set this to true if you don't set this to true it will not redraw and then it will as you can see here it was suddenly stuck now it is fluent all right so that works nicely so now what I want to do here is we have this specific value. I want to look here now. How do we get the tick position? So we can say here constant tick position will be what exactly? Well, our tick step size is important for that. 
So we're going to say here, um, whatever is the value. And then I can say here, let's do a, let's do one thing first. We're going to round it. So you say math.round. And let's convert this one to here. So now we have the exact number. That's probably what I was trying to say. You can see here now we're jumping instead of going very fluent on every single pixel, it will now jump up depending on if what is the nearest value, which is very nice. But of course, our tick is not matching because you can see here the difference. So how do we do this? Well, this is the reason why I have the step size here. What I want to do now is I want to divide this by the step size and then I will multiply by step size. If I save this, this tick position now, save, put it all together, should now work nicely. There we are. Let's give it a color and then we're basically done. CTX that um, stroke style will be equal to, let's grab a basic color here, the reddish color here, put in there, save, refresh. So now we have this here and look at that. That looks absolutely phenomenal. Let's confirm that this works if we have the negative value here or like another value. And you can see here now, even if our tick is, uh, the tick step size is higher or lower, it will understand the differences nicely. And that's it.